So thank you, Ben and Nick, and uh, organizing this uh, computer event day. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. So I'm Min Zhe Chen, uh, actually a system professor at the electrical engineering and uh, computer engineering. So my talk today is about uh, machine learning for uh, semantic communications. My research actually is focused on uh, fidelity learning, reinforced learning, and their applications for uh, IoT networks. So here I will introduce one of our current works that focuses on the use of machine learning for uh, semantic communication. Then you may have one question, what is uh, semantic communication? Why we need machine learning? So that's the talk today. So first I will introduce why we need semantic communication. Then I will introduce what is semantic uh, communication. Finally, I just introduce briefly about how, why machine learning can be used for uh, semantic communication. Firstly, so as the development of mobile device and uh, communication techniques, we may have several new applications such as virtual reality, digital twin, and also metaverse. Given these applications, we have maybe more requirements for the communication or data transmission. So here, one, two important uh, requirements. So first, we want the machines or the device to understand the meaning of the data. So uh, yeah, that is different from our current communication. Right? We focus on the data rate, we focus on the throughput, but we do not care about how much meaning the data can carry and how much meaning the data can deliver. So that's uh, uh, one issue. Another uh, requirement is that we want the network to provide a uh, large data rate and uh, uh, maybe low latency. So that's the uh, uh, requirement. Given these new applications and the requirements, we want a new communication or data transmission method. So here, actually, I introduce uh, classical information theory and the more general communication theory. The classical information theory is proposed by Shen no. So the famous uh, uh, theory is Shen no capacity, which uh, describes the data rate of one device. It used to describe the data rate and also it used to show the purpose of original communication. So the purpose actually is to recover the data, or it's to reduce the data as the transmitted data. So that's the original transmission purpose. After that, so we have a new device. Then the Shano and other uh, famous uh, gentlemen redefine the communication purpose. So actually, we are trying to solve three uh, communication problems. The first one, we are trying to improve data rate, improve throughput, and reduce packet errors. The second one, we consider how many meaning the data can be transmitted. The third one will be if we get this meaning, how we can implement the following tasks. Right? We care about the effectiveness. So that's the three levels of uh, communications. Here. For the first one, we have been studying many years from 1G to 2G, 3G, 5G, and so on. So we mostly focus on the first problem, like how to increase the data rate. Then our work actually wants to focus on the second uh, level, how the data can be transmitted with important meanings. That's why we uh, propose this uh, semantic communication. The meaning of semantic in, uh, communication actually it wants the device to transmit the meaning of the data instead of the original large size data set. Uh, compared to traditional communication networks, semantic communication first can improve communication efficiency and also it can provide these human or oriented services since we transmit the meaning of the data and we want the device to understand the meaning of the data. For example, at the right side, we, actually at the left side, we have a one figure here. So we have one sender and one receiver. The sender wants to transmit the image. Then the sender actually does not need to transmit the entire image. 
Each will use, the sender will use its own knowledge to extract the meaning of this figure, right? so, which is a man rides a bike. So this one is much simpler compared to transmit the entire image. So here we just transmit five words. At the receiver side, it receives this meaning and uses its own knowledge to recover maybe something similar to the original image. So that's what we call semantic information. Instead of transmitting the entire figure, we transmit the meaning. Similarly to the second example here, so we have Paul and Peter that they want to meet together. Then the Paul sent one message to uh, Peter, let's meet at Rome. Peter will use his own knowledge to understand where is Rome, and uh, then they can meet at the uh, position. So that's another example of this uh, data meaning transmission. Uh, however, so if we want to deploy these semantic communications for uh, realistic IoT networks, then we need to model several uh, things and solve several problems. First, we need to figure out what will be a good model for semantic information or data meaning. Then how to evaluate the performance of such type of meaning transmission and how to capture uh, how imperfect wireless links affect these transmissions. Also, we may have some security problems and privacy issues. This is because we actually extract the meaning from the data and transmit the meaning such that it may be uh, stolen by others or may have any privacy issues. So that's the problem. Uh, based on these problems, actually we can use machine learning to solve some problems. For example, we can use supervised learning to extract the data features or data meaning. We can also try to use unsupervised learning to find some hidden patterns of this data. Finally, we also try to study the use of reinforced learning to find the relationship between semantic uh, information extraction and also semantic information transmission. Finally, we try to improve the performance by finding some control strategies. So that's the reason that we use machine learning. Uh, after that, I just introduced uh, three very simple examples of using machine learning for uh, this semantic information extraction. The first example is very simple. We use neural networks as decode, encoder and uh, decoder. So as a this transmitter side, we have one encoder, such that the transmitter can encode the uh, original data set or just extract the, uh, the future from the original data, such that we can generate a small sized future vector. In this case, the transmitter can transmit this future vector to the receiver. Then the receiver can decode this uh, future vector and generate the original or recover the original data. So that's a very simple, actually, semantic in, uh, communication model. Here, we actually consider these data future vectors as semantic information. But for this simple model, we have one problem. Humans actually cannot understand what is future vectors. So this is just numbers. And these data futures are not, uh, cannot be understood by humans. In this case, we actually want to improve the performance. Then in our own work, actually, we propose the use of knowledge graph to represent semantic uh, information. So semantic information actually is a way to find the data meaning. In our work, actually, first we want to identify the entity in the original data and uh, their relationship. So here we use two or several neural networks to identify the entity and the relationship. After that, we can construct a knowledge graph, which is under the understandable by uh, humans. For example, here we have a long uh, original test. Then we can identify the objects or entity in the original test, such as this stochastic relation model and also speech recognizer. So these are objects 
We also can find their relationship useful, part of useful, and so on. Given this relationship and uh, entity, we can construct this uh, simplified uh, knowledge graph. Each node represents one entity, and uh, each edge represents their relationship. So from here, actually, you understand what it means. For example, three works speech database can be used for speech recognizer. So that's very understandable, and uh, compared to the original test, this one is very uh, small size. So that is uh, uh, semantic information extraction. We actually use some methods from uh, natural language processing. Uh, finally, let's just see a very quick example. So we have a very long test that we want to transmit. So as the transmitter, we use our method to generate several triples. These triples are used to build the knowledge graph. And also, we can find the importance for each triple. After that, the transmitter may select some of these triples to transmit. Then as the receiver side, it can, uh, yeah, as a receiver side, it receives several triples. Then it can use these triples to uh, generate some original test, which is similar, which may not similar to the original one, but they may have similar meaning. So that's uh, the semantic uh, communication. Another, we also have another work that focuses on the image transmission. So here, if we want to transmit this image, we, we actually, yeah, if we want to transmit this image, we can also use some uh, ob uh, objective identification method to find the objects in this figure, such as horse, human. Finally, we can generate this uh, knowledge graph. However, due to limited wireless communication resource, we may only select a partial of this graph to transmit. At the receiver side, the receiver can directly use this uh, knowledge graph for some other uh, task. For example, the receiver can recover the original image or generate similar images, or it can directly generate a, a comment that is used for some machine purpose. So that's the uh, main idea of this uh, semantic communication and uh, our works on this topic. So in this talk, I mainly just uh, briefly introduce what is semantic communication and uh, uh, how we use machine learning to design and optimize semantic communication performance. So that's the end of the talk, thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yelena. So big uh, semantic extraction obviously is a very well-studied area, it's well as picture so years. Is your contribution primarily in uh, optimizing the minimum amount of information that you need to send to reconstruct the picture? Is this a uh, actually we have two yeah, uh, so first that's a very good question. So Actually, so we have two parts. So here, actually, first we consider the information or data meaning extraction. So that's from actually from pure computer science. But our question actually is we want to transmit this meaning over wireless networks, such that we also need to consider the limitations from uh, wireless communication networks, such as Devices may have limited power, devices may have limited uh, throughput to transmit the data. In this case, actually, we are trying to jointly optimize this semantic information extraction process as well as this network uh, performance. For example, if we have limited network resource, how to change mm -hmm. the semantic information extraction process? So we want to combine this thing together and jointly optimize both performance. So are you doing novel um, semantic extraction based on the constraint-based optimization? Is this where your contribution is? Yeah, based on wireless channels, based on uh, wireless dynamics. Yeah. 
I would be interested in, we can take it offline, how do you guarantee security? Because most of these communication channels are totally unsecure. So providing the security and making sure that you are reconstructing is important. And also methodological assessment of the goodness or fidelity of this type of approaches. Because obviously you're doing heuristics here to a certain degree. And whether the image would be reconstructed to the point whether it's uh, good enough, if you will, depending on the assessment. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mingji.